Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm Micah Frankel, and we got a great one in store for you today. Joined by martial artist, artist, and experiencer of life. I'm also going to say that this guy is GG. PK. He's a good guy to know. He's Mike the Truth Jackson. As always, sir, thank you for the time. How you doing? Yo, that is arguably the best introduction I have ever heard. I appreciate you for that. Uh, man, I'm doing great. Man, I appreciate you for having me back on the show. Man, my pleasure. My pleasure. We're a little over a week away from seeing you back in the octagon and first thought that hit me is this is a much quicker turnaround from fight <laughs> two to three than it was from one to two was that like strategic did you just tell them hey remember i'm on the roster i'm willing to jump in why are we seeing you back i'm happy yeah. to why so quickly I, yeah i don't know i to be honest with you I, I, here's a funny thing right so after the the, the berry fight uh I went to get the eye check. That was the first thing I wanted to make sure that I was good. But I also hurt my hand in the fight, right? So the check cook that I popped him with, the one that actually changed, I, when I, that shot is the, the once he realized, he was like, oh, shit. He said, this motherfucker can hit. Because <laughs> the whole fight changed after that. Uh, and then I could see him. But when I hit him, like his face was like, oh, shit, <laughs> as he stepped back. Anyway, that shot, like I hurt my hand a little bit. I, it could be I'm getting a little older now, you know what I'm saying? So bones a little more brittle. But um, I get the eye checked out. But I was like, ah, I'm going to wait on the hand. All right? I was like, ah, I get it checked out. I'm going to get checked out. Because I didn't think they was going to call me. And fucking Sean texted me, hey, guy, guy, you ready? And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, uh, let me get my hand checked out. I'm going to get back. To and so when you get the hand checked out, and it was just a little, a little spraying space. Shot me up, took care of him. Um, we back to cooking, and I'm excited, man. I think this is uh, I'm excited for the, the matchup. Once I realized, um, they offered me to they offered me Pete, I had to check him out. I was like, Who's Pete Rodriguez? And uh, I checked him out, and I, I see I like his style, you know, the his debut would get this short notice against uh, what's the guy's Jake, the Australian kid, right? Della Magdalena. Yeah, that's a long name. That's a long name. Uh, but I say he and I have very similar builds, especially, you know, in contrast to Pete. And so I was I, I checked it out just to see, you know, how he fared against him. And I was excited. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, I don't I feel that the uh, uh, Del, say it again. Jack Della Magdalena. Damn, that is long. I'm going to just call. I'm going to remember Jack. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe you remembered that whole thing. Della Magdalene, that's long. Um, you know, Jack had a solid jab that he, you know, from his perspective, was a solid jab. Um, and he got ate up by that jab. And my everybody, if you watch any of my fights, you know, particularly, you know, my boxing and kickboxing matchups, you know I'm coming out with the jab. Like, that's a no. You know, there's no secret. And he couldn't get past Jack's jab. I was like, oh, shit. He, he's going to have a lot of trouble with my jab if he can't get past Jack's jab, um, which is going to open up some, some, some really cool things for me to show, things I wanted to show in the Dean Barry fight. Um, and that fight, I, was, I had to be a little bit more patient. And then he kick me in the dick twice and then try to rip my eye out while I was trying to be patient. So I didn't get to show the things that I wanted to show in those moments because I felt that was a great matchup too. Once I slowed him down and he was slowing down, he was getting tired. He was, he was breathing a little heavier. And then he even said it, you know, in, 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 uh, on Instagram in public, which is weird to me. Like I couldn't believe he admitted in public that he was getting tired. And I was like, bro, you, I didn't even feel like I was in a fight, you know, initially. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't feel like I was in a fight until you kicked me the second time. You know what I'm saying? And you did all – and you were tired? I was like, bro. And to the point, though, while I was being patient, I was about to open up on his ass. And by, like, another 30 seconds or so, 30, 45 seconds, I was getting ready. 
and you know, and, and then um, that's when the spinning nut shot came. And I was like, oh shit. So after that, I was like, all right, I just have to survive the round. I'm a, cause I still knew he was good. So to the point of me, if you watch the fight, when I'm on the ground, I'm like, ah, shit, I'm cussing him out and all that shit, right? I roll over and I look at the screen and I see the rest time. And I was like, oh, shit, this dude's got two minutes of rest, basically. So that's when I hop up because I was like, I, if I can, all I need to do is survive the first rest of this round. I can recover. I'm going to come back out here and I'm going to fuck this dude up. And then... He tried to root guys my out because he at that point he was he was he was frustrated. He couldn't he couldn't get me out of it. You know, you you had, you know, Dean was used to knocking people out quick, first round, bow, get them out. He's this Irish world, I'm gonna put world champion because that dude, I don't know what he's a champion of, but I'm not a champion. I took that shit. Because the dude can't fight. I'm in there with him and I'm I'm like, yo, this what this guy isn't, this is all so to the point I'm like, all right, I'm gonna let you do your little thing. I'm gonna let you do your little shit. You're, you're flying. I'm looking at all the punches go, but I'm gonna let you do that for a little bit longer. You don't need to get tired. Cause I know you can only do that for so long. And I'm a bush ass. You know, I knew that was that was about to happen, but he couldn't. He couldn't go because he, he couldn't go out like a warrior that we like we're warriors in here, man. You know, we're martial arts, however you want to look at it. But there is supposed to be some like Bushido code or some shit. And he knew he couldn't get me out of there. He hit me with his best shots, illegal shots. First two shots he hit me with were illegal shots. First two shots, illegal. And then he started hitting me with other shit. Then when he, he hit you. Out. Would he hit you with that spinning back kick? And you're down there on the ground. Are, are, is there a thought to yourself, are you fucking kidding me? He just did this again? Because there was the first one that happened on the inside leg kick. And you were like, no, nah, it's cool. Let's just keep going. But he's spinning back kick. You know, so, low. That is low. Yo. So the first one, I didn't think the ref saw it, though, right? When he kicked me, because I don't think the, he didn't say it. But I was like, all right, whatever. But it, it, it wasn't like it didn't alter anything in the fight. Yeah. But then the second one comes, and it was his most powerful move. And it was crazy. Like, that was the one thing. The whole camp, I had I had to bring in some, like, 45ers. I was like, yo, I need y'all to finish it. I need y'all. And, and I got caught once in training with it. And I was like, all right, I can't get hit with that in real life. <laughs> I was like, I can't get hit. I was like, if I get hit like that in real life, it's a wrap. So... And then that was on a 45, right? So I was like, dude, he's going to be a little chunkier. He's going to be heavier. So when he hit me, it was, a, it was by far the worst pain I had ever experienced. It, it legit, like, I, okay, here's the equivalent. And, I, and as I say it now, it boom. I remember as a kid, I was riding a bike. I was probably like eight or nine. And I remember like hitting a curb or some shit. And when I flew up on the bike, I went off the seat and I was riding on the boy. You know, the boy's bike had the straight handlebar. And but I wasn't, I was, I was like, I had to get on on my tippy toes. So when I came down, I landed full on the bar. That's what that that shot felt like. I remember, as I said, it felt like it, like a legit someone like had a double, like a plum tie, and fucking sent the knee straight to my ball. That's what it felt like, right? So I'm on the ground, like ah, fuck, this hurts, and then they're coming over checking on me. And then even Chris, he came over and he was like, he and he said, uh, he said that was, a, and when he, he he acknowledged the first nut shot in my head, I was like, all right, cool, he saw it. That, I had like, all right, he saw it. I, I didn't. Because if, if he didn't see the first one, who would have known what he would have done the second time, right? So I was like, ah, shit, he saw it. So I'm sitting there. And like I said, I found, look, look over and I see the time. I was like, no. You know, because even, even with that, I didn't, again, I felt I can beat him still. I didn't think he was, I, I didn't feel he was good enough to beat me. Right. Even so felt everything's going in your favor. So when I get up, though, you know, he's hitting, that's, and that's when he starts landing the shots. 
after the second big kick. But again, I'm compromised, right? But again, I'm like, they're not, at no point I thought I was going to get knocked out. I was like, all right. It kind of like, you know, somebody fucking doing it. It's just, it was annoying more than anything that he was hitting you, right? I, even like when I'm sparring, if someone hits a clean shot on me, I'm like, it, it, it annoys me because I don't like getting hit. Like that's, that's like my thing is to not, people when they come to see me spar in the gym, they're amazed at me not getting hit or the shit that I do to not get hit. So when I get hit, even in sparring, I'm like, ah, it fucking bothers me, right? And as he's punching me, I'm like, fuck, I'm getting annoyed that he's not. Well, he caught me with a good right hand. And that's when I like drop down. I get the, I shoot the single or double whatever. I get him on the cage. I clinch him up or whatever. And I was like, damn, I can't like this motherfucker really. I like that motherfucker really hit me. So I break all like I'm gonna cook his ass. So that's not break away. And I go back to strike it. Which in hind, this this is the only I feel mistake that I made in hindsight is that I had the better wrestling than him. And in that moment, I should have used it. But I was so pissed that this motherfucker hit me. I was like, I got to get him back. So we get, we screw up. I break away. We go back to the thing. And then that's we move around a little bit more. We clinch up. And then the fucking guy. Jump. And then he, and then I see like, like this. I just see this, right? I, and it looks like it's two fingers going in my eye. But it looks more like a poke. So I'm like, ah, shit, burns. So then I'm on the ground doing the whole thing. I'm blinking. Maybe I'm like, hey, nope, I'm not fighting with this eye. You know, because again, now it's like you trying everything in your power to like really damage me, legally legal, right? And in that moment, I was just like, there. If I lose, if I get up, right? Because I got again, I got up after the, 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 the spinning big shot. But that's kind of more like pain. But the eye guy was like, that's vision now. Like, I need my, I need to see this motherfucker. So we'll do that. So I was like, nah, like, you know, you don't get to, again, this is a prize fight. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to do these tactics and then, Get a get a bypass, you know what I'm saying, on my behalf. Because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get back. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna fight. He's gonna fucking hit me with some crazy shit because I can't barely see out of my left eye. He's gonna get like a TKO finish. He's gonna get the win. I'm gonna get the loss. I'm gonna get cut. And no one's gonna say, well, what what happened? Well, shit, I got kicked in the dick twice and the bitch I ripped my out. But I was like, fuck, I'm gonna tough it out and keep fighting. Like no one's gonna remember that. That would be but, dumb. That would be a, a a dumb business decision on my part. When you're you know rewatching the fight, did you realize how bad that gouge was? I'm like, he he like slam you to the ground almost by your eye. Like, did you realize how bad it was when it was happening compared to what you saw on film back? No, I did it. So I walk. We're getting back. We're getting back to the hotel. I'm walking through the lobby. And one of the, the, the guys that worked the security, he's sitting like this. I'm walking from this side. And as I walked through the door, he was like, yo, you seen the video? <laughs> I didn't even, I, I couldn't even, I, we were still like coming through the door. He was just like, yo, you seen the video? And I was like, nah. So he, so he put the replay on. And then that's when I noticed it wasn't a poke. He went here, here, here. Here with it, dog. And I was like, oh shit. Like, and so before I saw it, again, in, in right after the fight was called off, before they raised our hand, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a cheater, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, hey man, it is what hey, I didn't big him up, right? He said something of like he because he was like, oh, like his hands are in his face and stuff. And I was like, dog, like, don't let this shit get you down. Like. You'll be back. Like, I'm trying to, like, hype him up, right? It's like, I said, you want to be champion, right? He was like, yeah. I said, like, you'll be fine. We're going to back. I'm doing interviews. I'm saying, you know, he's not a bad guy, blah, 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 whatever. Shit happens. And I see the replay. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this dude. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, that shit's intentional as fuck. I was, <laughs> I was like, no. Nah. I was like, you don't, like, at what point, like, you don't train, unless you train that shit, you train the fucking 
the the pie mate, I the I the I you know what I'm saying? You remember Kill Bill, Pie Major, you got <laughs> right? Unless that's what you're training back at the crib. And so even in that moment, right, when I saw the replay, I like whatever it is what it is. I don't give a shit. I talked to my manager. My manager's like, yo, you should ask for a rematch. I was like, I was like, dude, they're not gonna give me a rematch. I was like, they're about to cut this motherfucker. And then I was like, no, nah, no, nah, they're not gonna cut him. So this was fight day. The following day, I'm getting fucking messages. Yo, you see what old buddy said? I was like, what? I click on it. Like, he deleted his whole Twitter. I was like, what? So then I have to, like, what? So I go to his Instagram. He still has Instagram up. And essentially, well, no, I think he said, he was like, he quit. Like, he was just like, yo, he could have kept going and he chose not to. I was like, wait, 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 wait. You don't get to do that. And okay, we were like, this wasn't a street fight. Right. This was a competitive uh, uh, a sporting event, combat sports. Right. There are rules and shit to this. And the first when the when when the ref comes to the back, the first two things he said was like, yo, I'm going to be checking for for eye pokes and nut shots. You don't get to do these things like you average one a minute. You got three within like the fight lasts a little over three minutes. You got that was the most minute. damage he did. And you don't get to do that. And then when I say, all right, I don't want to play with you no more because you're cheating. <laughs> and then you can say, oh, you, he, he quit. He don't want to play no more. I'm like, well, yeah, you're cheating. You're not, we didn't, we didn't agree to by those rules. We didn't say, all right, nut shots and eye gouges is legal. We agreed that shit was not cool. You said, yeah. And then when the bell rings, you go do the shit. And then you're like, wait, wait, wait. Why y'all, why y'all penalize me? Because you did the illegal shit that you agreed not to do, motherfucker. <laughs> Has he ever reached out and apologized? He's cut now, no. gone from the UFC. All right, so check it. So then, so that happens the next day. I check him on some shit. He kind of like, he whines a little bit more, whatever. Um, then they cut him. I, I poke fun at him for that, for them cutting him. I, ha- I had to. I had to. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. I had this uh, post one for that. Then he goes and he gets the Titan fight. So I'm way, I hear he gets the Titan fight. I don't say nothing. And then on weigh-in day, okay, put a pin real quick. At the PI on like that Wednesday, I see him. And I guess I was coming out like the sauna or something. And he was coming from a workout. Like, I don't. I don't have to, I don't have to hate you. I ain't got no beef with you. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, whatever. I don't have to not like you. Now, the dude, I, he did rub me wrong when he was like, yo, I'm, there's a bounty on his head. And I was kind of rubbed me wrong. I was like, all right, I'm going to fuck you up now. Put a bounty on my head. You didn't just say you want to win. You just like, I got to kill this dude and get my bonus and shit. But we had the PI talking. I'm looking at him because he's he looking at me and seeing how big I am. And I'm looking at him and seeing how short and fluffy he is. He's a little chunky monkey. And so, he, he talks about he's going to 145 pounds. And I took a step. I looked at him. Now, I was like, yeah, I mean, he's like, that'd be a good way for you, especially in the UFC. At this level of competition, like, you're not a one. And I knew that from the beginning. I was like, this dude's not a 170. And, and I looked. I was like, all right, whatever. You're going to 45. So that was a conversation before a 170 weight fight, right? So now fast forward back to, to Titan for 55 fight. You just fought at 170. Now you're going down. You, ain't, you told me you was going to 45. You just you stop halfway. First stop. And you can't even do that right. You can't make 55. You was like, whatever your weight was. And then you did it so poorly. Like he damaged his kidneys. How, like, what were you doing? <laughs> Like what? Like what? Did you wait until like the because like, you was you just walking around at like one seventy, eating whatever? I don't I don't know what what Italians eat a lot of, but whatever they was eating a lot of, and then you the day he's oh shit I got a fight, and then you just try to do something stupid, but I don't. You can't call yourself a professional fighter. 
if you don't, you can't play by the rules. So not only are you cheating in, in the competition, you can't make weight, which is part of the comp- part of your job. You're not a professional. He's not a professional fighter. And so, so I poke for the other is I poke for I said some shit to him, and then he'll get mad. He was like, oh, fuck you, you're a cunt. I almost died. My kidney shut down, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, fuck you and your kidneys. I don't care. So we go from your UFC debut. I mean, we get Mickey Gall. That, that wasn't publicized enough. Uh, you find a little name named CM Punk. That's not big enough. Right. Uh, and then for this fight, it's like a spectacle because of all the fouls you have to endure. Coming up against Pete Rodriguez, are you just like, I'm craving a normal fight week? I've done it. You've done it probably in the amateurs and other sports. You're like, I- I'm craving something. Just can we ha- not have some weird shit this week? Um, I would say I would like to say yes, but. I, it's just what it is, man. I, the whole thing has just been an anomaly. It's just been a little a glitch in the matrix. It's, a, it's what I like to call myself at this point. Um, given, like, I look at people who've come and gone, you know, people who retire, you know, and I'm just, and you just like, yo, I'm still here. I, I'm just still here, fucking around, you know. Um, and it's an anomaly, you know, it's, it's really wild, but I love it though. Like that's, that's just kind of like my life though, really, if I'm being honest, uh, just kind of like happens that way. So with this and, and the way everything is stacked up, watch this one, just be a regular week. Watch. This is going to be a regular, this is the one that's just going to be regular. Like we got to get, we got to fit one in. Um, if something goes down, I, I, I'm a roll with it. Um, but I feel this was going to be, just a solid fight week. Everything is going to play out the way it's supposed to play out. I'm going to go in there, get the finish, and um, true food draw off that. I've heard you before when talking about Pete say he is a warrior and, and that you think this is going to be a fun fight. Uh, where did you gain that respect from him for him, and what leads you to think it's going to be a fun one? Well, fun based off style. Um, I, I, again, I am a, I'm a, I'm a fight aficionado, you know, I, I love fighting, you know, uh, I've been a fan, you know, from a very young age in, in combat. And I understand that styles make fights. And I understand, I know particularly what my skills are and what my style is. And I see what his is. And I know based off that, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be, and again, I, one, I know me. Um, people were ooh and on just at my defense. Again, when, uh, against Dean, I'm literally getting to see this guy's fist go by my face. And yeah, you know, for us, the audience, that's a little bit. <gasps> and, and again, I, I, you, you see my composure. I'm, as, we, as I'm in there, you get to watch it. I just, ooh, that was cool. Ooh, look at that. Oh, ooh, that would hurt if it hit me. You know, I'm, this is real time. I'm in a fight. This is how I react to that, right? And that wasn't even an offensive side of it. And that was based off, I would just, again, it was, it was, I had to bite my, my, it was a patient game with that one. I was waiting to do some cool shit and all other stuff happened. But in this fight, I understand it's the same, it's the same mentality, same game plan, same principles um, of, of where the, the fight's how I feel the fight is going to play out. Um, but I'm not going to have an opponent who is going to have that kind of footwork. He's not going to run the way Dean ran. Uh, I'm not going to call that being evasive, like, but he was running, <laughs> you know, and then he got like dash in. Um, that's not Pete style, you know. And so with that, he's going to be someone who's going to stand right there. I was like, we might be getting to a, so a good old gunslinging, yeah, a, 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 a gunslinging match right here, you know, and I'm really excited about it. And, and I feel that he's going to be a great dance partner for him. We saw in his debut, we bring up uh, Jack Della that he fought a couple of times, got right into the pocket, wanted to get after right. it and bang. So that plays right into everything that you like to do. hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so that's why I'm so excited. Um, I don't, you know, I, I can do the outside game. I can do the inside game. It, it don't matter. I, you know, I just, I hate chasing people. 
I hate having to like, damn, it's like, why are you running? You know, it's just, and again, that, it, there's a difference between running and, 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 and like not even being evasive, just disengaging. Like, and Dean was running. You know what I'm saying? If you, again, you watch my boxing matches, the kickboxing matches, you see the engagement. You know, even in Dean, like I kept pressing forward. I was like, bro, why are you running? I like, I was like, oh, fuck, come back. Ugh. You know, I had to chase him down. Um, and, and then I was efficient with that. You saw, you saw how how I handled that situation. And so that given the, my style, you know, and, and in addition to Pete's style. That's why I feel the excitement. Not too long ago here recently, uh, locally in Albuquerque, I went to a bare knuckle boxing event. So I'm moving around the event. And uh, and as I'm trying to get towards interviewing fighters and whatnot, there's people in the crowd, you know, coming up to me. I'm wearing the brand T-shirt and everything. And I'm like, wow, wow, that, that's taking me aback. But I got to ask what that's like on the perspective of being there for grappling or being there at Fury FC or being there at Invicta. And, and I'm not Mike Jackson. What is it like Mike Jackson moving around at one of those events, still trying to do the media side, but, but shit, you're a celebrity in your own right. Man, I, you, you know, I'm, I'm media, but I'm in, in my own, like, my own little sphere of what I do. What I do is like, I'm a content creator, you know, in that is, is how, is how I cover it. So you get a lot of behind the scenes content that, well, that's how I initially got on the scene in the first place. As I say it, I never put it like this is now. Um, when I came on, I started by doing like these video blogs, kind of like what Dana White was doing back in the day. But then I was at, what, what people really enjoyed about it was my, uh, my commentary over the fights. Like that was the number one thing. And then number two, was the behind the scenes because at that time we didn't have the content out that we have, right? I was at a time where, you know, in 2000, what, this is like 2009, 2010 when I first started, the only thing fans saw, like you would see when the fighter walks out, you see him fight, and then when they walk back, and that was it. You had no idea what happened before a fight, after a fight, during a fight. You didn't get to see how some fighters you know, for me, I enjoy um, like the emotional side of fighting, right? You get to, so I would do like these interviews and I finally need to post a picture of my throwback. Uh, uh, and I did post it from when I used to do post-fight interviews. Um, I would get that raw emotion right after a fight, right? And I was so, not, not a handful of times and someone asked about it recently, it's like, yo, did you have anybody like ever come back and like, yo, can you delete that or edit it out? And I was like, no, I wouldn't. I had some people do that, but I wouldn't because that that took away from the authenticity of that moment, you know. And I have dope, like I, I was in, uh, I've been in like art shows where I uh, display, you know, some of my photography. And a lot of those shots were, you know, right after a dude got a finish, but in the finish, he's like, he got cut with some elbows, so he's bleeding and he's like, ah, um, or deuce in the back after, you know, like a parent died or something like that, you know. Um, coincidentally, I'm working with fighters now that I've shot from the beginning to the UFC. I'm working with Adrian Yanez. You know, I've been there from the very beginning to the UFC. Leo Mana Martinez from the beginning to the UFC. Like, we're starting to get in that realm of fighters for me where guys like Derek Lewis, I saw once they got into the UFC or other fighters who... I saw a portion of their career, right? And then they get into the UFC. But their guys now I'm seeing from their very first amateur fight to the UFC, you know? And with Adrian, uh, we, we got some cool little content coming about. Again, I'm taking my brand, combining it with, you know, fighters. And uh, we, we just making some dope art because that's all I enjoy doing is just create, whether it's with my hands fighting or, you know, with the photos. Okay, so maybe you don't get that exact reaction at the events because you're in the backstage, but but what is it like when you're getting that fanfare, when you're getting people coming up to you? Because again, it's coming for so many reasons. So one person would be like, oh, you're a dope fighter. Another person's like, oh man, I love your photography. Somebody's yeah, gonna yeah. be like, I've listened to the podcast. What is that like? Because you're getting it for so many different ways. Man, 
it at this point it, it's it's always a cool I I, I enjoy it. I feel that um, I help like when I'm in events, right? When I'm at you know the the local cars out here, and and that's what people know me for, and they get to come up. They it, it, people like know they feel that they know me, right? And they get the selfies or they get the shout outs or whatever. Or I'll have it where I'm shooting fights and people are taking pictures of me from balkies or wherever and then they're sitting there, hey yo check you out or whatever you know um i and that's always dope um because i appreciate people's respect for what i do you know because essentially i'm doing this for the fans that was why i got into this um to help fans get a different perspective on fighting that they didn't have before so uh, the content that i'm putting out is for them and when they when they react the way they do it as far as like the, the the love and respect and all that and the support you know it just it's a dope feeling you know and, and i i realize that the people are appreciative of it because i know there, there's a lot of there's some people i'm kind of dealing with right now um that they're very unappreciative of this shit but the majority of the people are are, are the support and, and they love what i do we're gonna see you against Pete Rodriguez, UFC Vegas, 62. It feels like this one is going to give you the opportunity to show off your skill set the most that we've had an opportunity to see so far. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's why I'm so excited about this. I was excited about Dean's fight, but I I was excited until it, up until the point I wasn't. I don't feel with this, I even feel a little bit more now. Cause I got to show a glimpse of it in a Dean fight. And now I'm gonna get to put it all together and show the package. And then people are really gonna appreciate the art. And I brought it up already. We see you there a lot taking photos, Fury FC. Is there a name? Is there a kid that you've seen that you're like, that one's one to keep an eye on? Oh man, there's so many. Uh, there's this kid right now, Josh Van. Uh, Josh, I don't, he, they call him like the fearless. I think it's Instagram, like fearless MMA. Um, this is a kid who, who he reminds me of Derek Lewis in a way. He comes up through a gym who essentially is the next generation of Silverback, right? This is the son, it's the, the original gym owner passed away a few years ago. His sons, his children opened up their own version of it, right? And now this kid came from them and kind of he's going to a yeah, he's going to like a four ounce side of gym too. Same, basically same path as Derek Lewis, but he's like a one twenty fiver. Um, the kid is nice. He had he and so his last fight he fought uh, Paris Moran, who is another hot prospect out here in in, in Houston or Texas, and still is despite though because he, he he took the loss to Josh, but still a, a prospect in his own right. But Josh, man, the way he went out here and got the finish, I was like, oh, shit. Like, because it was one of those, like, man, I don't know. Uh, when, when I saw the matchup, but in that moment, I thought he was, he, he was, it was just a little bit too much for him at that time. And, yo, he showed himself and he showed that he was ready for the next level. Because we all felt that Paris was definitely ready for the next level. And the way he handled that moment was, was really dope for him, you know. And so there are guys that I've seen kind of like come into fear from, from other, like whether it's Denver or other cities and stuff like that, who, who are doing dope things in their own right. But to see him come up as, again, from in Houston, his very first found the scene to where he is right now, man, that's the, that's the guy to, to check out, Josh, Josh Van. You're back there doing media at Fury FC. And, and do you ever get put on the other side of it where all of a sudden these kids are like, I got to take advantage of the opportunity. Let, let me pick your brain a little bit because they're trying to get to a show that you're already performing for. I've had a few. Um, I, I've had a few um, reach out and, and we kind of have a few conversations here and there. But uh, outside, I think it's just. I, I just like enjoy going to the gyms, man. I, I like going to to the to cross trade with these guys. And when I walk in there, they say, "Wait, that's a photographer, dude." And then after they was like, "Oh shit, that dude can fight too." <laughs> like those are those are moments I look for, and I engage with with the younger guys. Because man, I feel man, these boys out here calling me OG now. I'm like, shit. All right, 
<laughs> is it a different kind of, I, I guess, relief or just experience for you going into fight week when you're competing because you're around fights all the time? And, and I just feel like when you're media, there's those times where you're you're uploading, you're trying to create content, you're just so busy. Is there a different way of savoring the week when it's your fight week? Yeah, man. I, I do like these little blogs um, during fight weeks, which kind of has the same kind of vibe. Feels like I'm working a little bit, um, but but not as as stressful in a way. I, I want, I, you know, for me, I want I want fight week to feel like a regular week. It has. I, I want for me. That's how um, I handle fighting from a from a mental as like mental men, the mental mental part of fighting is a real thing too and you have to do what works for you um so for me i like my fight weeks to feel like you know, i don't i don't want there to be any hype for you no know, celebration because like i already don't celebrate shit as it is um and so i don't i want this to feel like i'm just going to the gym you know which is cool because the apex in the cell feels like you're going to the gym right so I the celebration come after. If we want to do it after, if you want to celebrate me, that's cool. But you know, during fight week, nah, I just I like it to to be to be cool and chill. Um, again, that's what works for me, which was which is crazy because for the the Dean Barry fight was the first fight I had no nerves at all. Like I I didn't feel any like jitters no i had a moment like on weigh-in day like at dinner i was like this is, i kind of got my head i guess uh but on fight day itself i got nothing and, and that and that's something something that you kind of like fight prepare themselves for it's like yo and for me I, I was just wondering when it was gonna come and like at throughout the whole day literally up until the bell rang i was like the fuck like why well, don't feel it and then the fight happens, and then even in that moment, because for me, the the nerves normally go away after the first, after the um, the bell rings, and then after first contact is made. Well, well I'm punching hammer, vice versa. Um, and I never, even in a fight, like again, I never to the point of the spinning back kick. Like I never felt like I he was going. To die. Anything, um, but like leading up to the fight, like there was nothing. There, there were no nerves. Like, oh shit! Like, I think we reached another point in, uh, in this game. And like I said, given given the confidence level uh, of where my skills are compared to to Pete, I because I, I feel this is going to be um, uh, an even better matchup for me. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what the comfortability level is going to be? You've got the reach and the size advantage. We, you got the experience advantage. Does, does it feel like when you start putting things on a checks and balance kind of scale that there's a possibility that there's just so much you're going to overwhelm Pete? This is going to be too much for him. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it's giving my style too. Like I'm not like I'm my style is not to really to I'm like I'm not taking risks like that, right? Like I'm not a guy who's gonna like get in the fire and and. You know, I'm known for my my slickness, my head movement, my footwork. I'm aware of the dangers. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I just feel that I'm gonna be too much at at, at every aspect. And and again, not to knock him because like I, I mentioned earlier, is like I feel the guy is a warrior, uh, given his ability to to get in this in his cage, um, given what he's done in the past, uh, given his personality. You know what I'm saying? So it's all respect, but I just feel that I'm better. Like this is a this is a competitive match. You know what I'm saying? And and I gotta go out here and show my art. And it's just a violent art that I show. We know you get a lot of traveling. And uh, did you keep camp centralized for home there in Houston, or did you get out and get some traveling in in preparation? I got a little travel in. Uh, I, you know, I enjoy the travel because um, at home sometimes you can get. I don't want to say complacent. But, you know, a lot, I can just go in there and just, I get used to my training partners and I can just work what I work. So for me, I enjoy going to um, newer gyms to get different looks just to see, why, you know, from someone who doesn't know, doesn't really know me well and vice versa. And I, I got a lot of, a lot of positive feedback, you know, from, from during my travels. 
um, which again, just, you know, reassures me um, and, and builds the confidence up, especially again, when I, when you go to high level gyms, you know, and, and you get this type of reassurance, you get to, you know, you are in the training rooms with guys who, you know, top 10 in the world in their weight class or, you know, top 20, whatever, you know, you in there with some bad motherfuckers, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's always just a dope feeling, you know, once you're done. And again, that's why I feel the respect comes from, from, from guys who are in this sport because I'm in the training rooms with these guys, you know what I'm saying? The guy, the, 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 the UFC casual fans who chime in on and shit like, they don't know. They don't. They don't have any idea what training is like, let alone what what like a high level, you know, a uh, uh, training room is. You know, so that's what I say. Like that, these people just saying crazy shit. I don't. Know, it doesn't bother me at all, um, because my peers, you know, getting that respect and and being there with them and learning from them and vice versa. You know, me going to <laughs> going to a spot with a dude who's you know competing UFC, he's competing Glory. Um, high level competing like these organizations i go in this joint i show him some shit and then the next day he was like yo i appreciate the shit that you showed me like i'm showing some clients and like this is really dope shit when i get that when when i get people who i post the shit on my instagram you know i posted the 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 defense a lot of my it's more defensive and slick shit like that when people send me dm like yo like that's dope how you can do some shit like that you know what i'm saying like that's that's the shit that that means to me, you know, or, or that matters to me. We've talked about a lot about the fight game, but there's always things more important than the fight game. And I got to bring it up like I bring it up last time. If you don't just rock the greatest T-shirts, I think this one with an even better meaning than the last one. Uh, what's the, the meaning, the concept, the movement behind the T-shirt right there? Man, d America, man. You know, the whole thing is is – is a whole anti-racist versus racist movement going on right now. We had a lot of people getting called out as being put more in the forefront, you know, given everything going on that, you know, a lot of times people can just kind of like turn a blind eye to it. Ah, oh, it's happening over there. But when when it's forced in your face and you got to experience it, it's going to change you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you a different person. And we've seen how some people are. And... It's it, no one wins, you know, no one wins from that. And so when you live in a country where you want everyone to ride, people call themselves like it because all of the teams are based on countries, right? Like that's what the teamwork is, right? You would think that you would want everybody in your team to be good, you know. And so when you have a group of people who are like stabbing themselves like in the thigh, and you're like, why are you stab yourself in the thigh? And they just like, cuz it's hurting you. And you're like, what? That don't make sense. You know, like they just saying shit like that, you know, and, and we got to end it. And so my whole thing, I'm just doing my part in this, you know, forever war. And uh, I enjoy the antagonization of a certain group of people who don't like me. Everyone, be kind to your neighbors. Be kind That's to it, everybody. Bro. That's it. Be nice. Don't be an asshole. But people... So, you know what? It is? It's just empathy. Just show empathy. That's all it is, you know. But I don't show empathy to people who don't like me. So, he's Mike Jackson, Mike the Truth Jackson, and you're gonna see him in the octagon again next Saturday, UFC Vegas 62 against Pete Rodriguez, sir. As always, thank you for the time today, my man. I appreciate you having me.